A vast trove of Cambodia's Angkorian crown jewelry, some dating back to the 7th century, resurfaced in London last summer, it has been revealed. The stolen items belong to British antiquities smuggler Douglas Latchford. Experts say they have never seen most of the jewelry before and are stunned by its existence. The collection has been secretly returned to Cambodia's capital, Phnom Penh, and is due to go on display there in the country's National Museum. Latchford died in 2020 while awaiting trial in the U.S. His family promised to return his stolen collection to Cambodia after he died, but the authorities did not know what exact exactly would be handed over or how it would happen. Brad Gordon, the head of Cambodia's investigative team, became the first representative of the nation to see the jewelry when he visited London last summer. Please don't touch the artwork. Now and then, we are reminded as to why these signs are still needed in galleries around the world. Art lovers in Miami looked on in horror on Thursday night when a collector accidentally knocked a $42,000, £34,870 sculpture by U.S. pop artist Jeff, pop artist Jeff Koons to the ground. She had tapped it with her finger, witnesses at the event said. The statue, one of Koons' iconic dog balloons, smashed into tiny shards, and had to be swept into dustpans by gallery staff. The accident happened during the exclusive VIP-only opening night of Art Night of Art Wynwood, a contemporary art fair held annually in Miami, Florida. Local artist Stephen Gamson told the Miami Herald he was admiring the sculpture when an older woman tapped it, knocking it off its pedestal. It's pretty impossible to go on TikTok without hearing Mae Stevens' ultimate breakup song at the moment. The 19-year-old was working at a supermarket when the 15-second clip of her single If We Ever Broke Up blew up. She's since gone from getting a few thousand hits on her videos to millions of views and has signed to a record label. Record label. But Mae's told that newsbeat she only put it on TikTok as a last-minute thing when she was struggling for content. I just I put on the brightest jumper I could, pulled the most awful dance moves, went for my New Year's Eve, and woke up the next morning and got spammed because it had gone viral, she says. I was in a bit of a state of shock, I was like, this isn't actually happening.
Think of the cities of the world which are renowned as hotbeds of innovative technology and Helsinki might not be near the top of the list. However, the often snow-covered streets of this relatively quiet northern European capital are home to some of the most ambitious and successful games makers in the world. As a result of all this, the Finnish capital is considered capital is considered by many to be the capital of mobile gaming, an industry currently worth an estimated 120 billion pounds to the global economy. Which leads to an obvious question, how did it develop this reputation? In the 1980s and 1990s, Finland wasn't considered to be one of the wealthiest countries in the world. Earlier this month, musician Ricky Kedge became the first Indian to win three Grammy Awards. But despite global recognition, the musician is yet to find a large fan base at home, sharply dressed and sporting a salt pepper beard with slick long hair. Kedge has an air of glamour around him. People who are familiar with him say, say he loves to party, and Kedge agrees, he does. The 41 year old also holds a degree in dentistry and is an environmentalist who has served as an ambassador for UNICEF, UNESCO, and several other organizations. But beyond his self assured style and many talents, he's a qualified dentist. Kedge says he is actually, as he is actually just a musician who wants to spark positive impact with his work. The rising cost of living means our spending habits are changing to keep up with sky-high food and energy prices. It's something those in the world of fashion have to be aware of as people cut back. But that doesn't mean it's a bad time for the industry, it just means getting creative. That's according to Josephine Phillips who founded Sojo, Sojo an on-demand app that repairs clothes. The 25-year-old wants people to think twice about throwing clothes out and instead think about fixing them. Josephine says the idea for the app came to her when she needed a piece of clothing altered, but didn't know how to do it herself. In order to get something repaired, users log their issue, log their issue on the app and a courier collects it on bike. On the opening track of his 2011 breakthrough solo album Alter Ego, aka said he, never planned, never wanted to be a celebrity. But the South African, who was gunned down in Durban a week ago, did not hold back about his talents. A few days before his death, which police believe was a targeted killing, the award-winning 35-year-old rapper anointed himself as the best producer in his genre. 
Sparking a huge debate, the artist who also went by the nickname Super Mega tweeted, Statistically speaking, since I've produced 90% of all my music, surely I'm the greatest saw hip-hop producer of all time. But already in, in 2014, on Congratulate, one of the hits that solidified his megastar status, he said he would be shining like a diamond that's forever, now congratulate me. A student doctor who organized surgery to separate conjoined twins in the Democratic Republic of Congo said he was furious when one died of malaria. Anik and Destin were flown from a remote village of Muzambo to the capital, Kinshasa, to be operated on by a team of volunteer surgeons in 2017. But Destin, but Destin passed away before the twins' first birthday. Dr. Junior Mudji said, I couldn't believe how one could die of an easily treatable condition. Every time a kid under five dies because of malaria, it is a tragedy, but this one was so sad to me. Dr. Mudji, who is part of a global healthcare leadership program at the said business school in Oxford, discovered the fate of Destin after getting back in touch with the family in their extremely rural village. A teenager born with cerebral palsy, who was picked to play football for England, has had his leg amputated. Jude Aston, 18, from Wolverhampton has said he is staying incredibly positive, having made the agonizing decision to lose his leg. I was laughing and joking right up until I went to sleep, he said. The teenager developed complications following a series of leg procedures that began in childhood. When he was 15, he had surgery to lengthen muscles to help him walk more easily and reduce aches he felt while playing for the West Bromwich Albion Cerebral Palsy football team. But months after surgery he developed a condition called Complex Regional Pain Syndrome. Dwarfed by his adult hospital bed, five-year-old Aras is resting on his back playing with a model car. He is one of Turkey's miracles. Rescue teams freed him from the rubble of his home in the now-devastated city of Karaman Maras, 105 hours after the earthquake. When he was brought into the intensive care unit, air unit hypothermia had set in and his body temperature had dropped to 28 degrees Celsius, 82 degrees Fahrenheit. Aras may have survived but his seven-year-old sister Hiranor did not. Neither did his nine-year-old brother Alp, nor his father.
just one of so many families irrevocably broke broken by this disaster. Sitting at Araz's bedside and gently ruffling his grandson's dark hair is Mehmet. An on-demand, non-hormonal male contraceptive pill may be a real possibility, say scientists who have found a cell pathway, or switch, that stops sperm from being able to swim. Tests in mice suggest it keeps sperm stunned for at least a few hours, long enough to stop them reaching the egg. Many more tests are planned and needed, moving to rabbits before people. The idea is users could pop a pill an hour before sex and keep an eye on the clock for when it wears off. The effect lasted for around three hours. By 24 hours, it appeared to have fully worn off with the next batch of sperm swimming normally. One of the scientists, Dr. Melanie Balbach from Weill Cornell Medicine in New York, said it showed promise as a reversible, easy-to-use contraceptive. The Tinder Swindler, which became Netflix's most watched documentary in 90 countries when it was released in February 2022, alleged that Simon Leviev had conned women he met on the Tinder dating app out of about $10 million. He denies the allegations. Ms. Conlin says she watched it while sitting next to him on the sofa. Him on the sofa. I knew it was all true, she says. But she says she felt obliged to accept his version of events. According to her, it was a controlling relationship, and it was easy for him to persuade her to defend him publicly. For example, on U.S. news show Inside Edition, when we asked Leviev to respond, sent us nine emails within 45 minutes, and two more direct messages on the video sharing app, Cameo, in the days that followed. There were many screenshots of WhatsApp messages and a video which shows Ms. Conlin shouting and grabbing him. The mystery of India's ancient port of Muziris has captivated archaeologists for decades. Once at the heart of one of the world's most influential trading routes, and hailed by Roman author Pliny the Elder as the first emporium of India, Muziris was known for its opulence, frequented by ships carrying spices, gems, ivory, and s gems, ivory, and silk. However, suddenly, in the 14th century, it was no more. Seemingly wiped from the map, the great port of Muziris disappeared without a trace. To this day, there is still huge debate over Muziris' true location, 
but could new archaeological evidence finally provide an answer? For Ukrainians fleeing Russia's invasion of their country, the railway to Pashemishal is a lifeline. Every day for almost a year, trains have been pulling into Platform 5 carrying families from Ukraine to Poland, from war to safety and peace. The carriages are far less crowded than in the earliest, panic-filled days, but the, but the refugees are still coming. This week, Many said they were driven by fear that Vladimir Putin will mark the first anniversary of his war by ordering a new, deadly offensive. Olga and her family spent one and a half months under Russian occupation when the war started. She decided to leave northern Ukraine now because she, because she couldn't face the same hardship all over again, the constant shelling and fear. In the heart of Ghana's capital, Accra, hoardings plastered with artistic impressions of an architectural marvel block prying eyes from seeing what lies on the other side. Depending on who you ask, the planned multi-million dollar building, known as the National Cathedral of Ghana, is either a symbol of the country's economic mismanagement or a strategic and bold investment. In a speech at the turn of the new year, just two weeks after Ghana effectively defaulted on repaying most of its external debt amid a mounting cost of living and economic crisis, President Nana Akufo Addo, scoffing at critics, renewed his commitment to the religious building. The National Cathedral is an act of thanksgiving to the Almighty for his blessings, favor, grace and mercies on our nation, the president said at the construction site where a Bible-reading marathon had been taking place. Follow trypt.com for all the latest PTE academic material updates. Link in the description.